Well, you button hooked me on the last episode. I did. I did. Right there, right when you made that bold statement, though. I did. Well, I thought you were coming in with a counterpoint, and you just you button hooked me. I did. I did. Hey, if you ever made a bold statement about the Buffalo Bills, hit that like button below. We literally read every single comment, like every single one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like this is a comment. public forum. It's a public forum. And subscribe if you like uh, two guys having breakfast in the car. And because I finished my coffee, it's literally two guys, one cup. <laughs> Wait. He's just going to make that <laughs> joke. Tag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. <laughs> I was just going to make that joke. <laughs> and your latest installment of Two Guys, One Cup. Two Guys, One Cup. So as I ended last episode, I don't feel terrible. Much, much to do about nothing. Tremaine Edmonds. I feel like this is gonna be a knife fight. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I have that feeling inside of me that we're about to get into a knife fight. Well, we had spoken earlier, and you had made a very bold statement, but a very accurate statement. Fred Warner is the closest thing to a hundred million dollar linebacker in the NFL. He had like right. 95 million. People want to talk about TJ Watt. Thank We're you. talking okay. inner, yeah. middle, inner, inside linebackers. Okay? Yeah, TJ Watt is, is a pressure linebacker. Yes. But they are different. Like yeah. I understand they share the LB name, but they, they are ultimately different. Facts. He's more of an edge guy. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. So he got his hundred million dollars. We understand that. So for those of you that tried to troll and comment, no, TJ Watt. Um, no, we're talking about Edmonds could be the first one hundred million dollar inside linebacker. Absolutely. Middle linebacker. Yep. And my question is, has he earned it? Because yeah. I'll be I'll I'll be honest, I'm gonna throw a wrench in it right now. This is why it's gonna be a nice fight to me and Paul. If they sign him to a hundred million dollar contract, five years. I know it'd be tough. Five years, hundred mil. And drafted a, mid, a middle linebacker, I'd be okay with it. <laughs> I love trolling you. Man, so this is what contractions feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. All right, where to start? So, okay, is he getting re signed or not? I mean, in your opinion, is he going to get re signed to the Buffalo Bills? I honestly feel like the length and value and future of Tremaine Edmonds is specifically tied to the defense to your defensive coordinator moving into the 2022 season not the 2023 season not the 2024 season the 2022 season because you have to make up your mind now because the salary cap is going to keep going up so this deal is going to keep getting more and more expensive the salary cap is going to go so up so much Mario that they're stopping it from going up how much it's supposed to they're capping the increase. They're saying, yes, it should go up $38 million, but we're going to cap it at like 20. Gotcha. So the salary cap is going to go up exponentially the next three years, right? Like exponentially. Why do I feel this is an episode where you're going to talk to me about hidden money? Where guys get signed for deals but get paid under the table? No, 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 none of that, none of that. No soft but, money? No soft money. Okay. But the cheapest time to get admins is today, not yes. tomorrow. The cheapest time to get Edmonds on a long-term deal is 2022, not 2023 when you really have to make the decision. Like yes. you, it is, it is, you know, poop or get off the pot time in 2023, but that's why you have to make the deal now. So the question is, is he most valuable to your current defensive coordinator, your future defensive coordinator, or is it all Sean McDermott? Because you have to look, there's a driver here somewhere. Is being totally committed to Tremaine from an athletic standpoint, I don't know if there's a better athlete at the linebacker position in the NFL. Admittedly, yeah. right? He's just a freak. He's an Olympic level athlete, right? Olympic level. Can you replace that one? Do you need to replace that two? And where's that value ultimately stored? Is it with Dean? Is it with the defensive coordinator? Or is it with McDermott? Or 
because think about it this way, right? Is Tremaine Edmonds detrimental to your defensive coordinator in 2023? Like, does that contract, is it, is it, is it a roadblock to a defensive coordinator in 2023? I don't think so. Okay. No, because here's the, here's the deal. <clears throat> I think that the subscribe button's below. You guys should hit it. I think that with Edmonds, <laughs> subtle. Edmonds is, this is what the, McDermott has probably learned over his years of coaching and Bean has learned as his, his assistant GM and GM. This is, you have to equip your team with athletes, the freakish athletes you can at the time, especially in the first round, okay? I think you could drop Trey White in any defense and he'd be successful. Mm -hmm. I think you drop Josh Allen in any offense and you'd be successful. Jermaine Edmonds is a physical freak of that nature where if you put him in any defense, Although it's taken him a minute to get the get the reins, because he was more of an outside guy at Tech. Mm -hmm. Now you put him inside, you know, Trey always played corner, Allen always played quarterback. Like it's different. It is. You know what I mean with the developmental level and the pro progression. You can have him play anywhere you want. The, the next defensive coordinator comes in, they draft the middle linebacker, they put him on outside. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to be arguing that fact. I right. think he, I, we've we've said for many years and. He's still in the middle. He's still a middle linebacker. We're not mad about it, no. but we're saying that if you put him outside, he'd be much more productive. Yeah. I just think that. I just feel that. So, any coordinator that you want to have work with Edmonds can work with that physical specimen, like you said, Olympic level athlete. I don't think that deters any defensive coordinators. But the, the other thing that's factored in here is the kid's age. Mm -hmm. He is signing his second deal when most guys come into the league. Right. You can't put a price tag on that. I agree with that. So I believe that. You give him a five-year deal, make him the first $100 million middle linebacker, and then if you need to move him to the outside at a premium position, you got him for a, for a song. Like, you, you're underpaying him. Like, people right. are talking about the Allen deal right now because of how they signed it and when they signed it. He's going to be an underpaid quarterback in, like, three years. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So Absolutely true. That's the same that's going to be said about Edmonds. It, it will. It will. So that's why you do it, like you said, you do it today, not tomorrow or not right. next year. Because right. that. what if he has 150 tackles, five picks next year, just totally blows the roof off of everything? Then now you're, you're in trouble. You're, you're going to, yeah. yeah now you're you're going to do And Bean and McDermott have been very good about that, where they're they're proactive in their approach with certain guys before they start to cost too much. Can you imagine trying to sign Allen now? So what deal he want oh, now? Yeah, yeah. Jesus. So let me ask you a dangerous question. Is Tremaine Edmonds more valuable to the Buffalo Bills in the middle of a 4-3 or more valuable on the outside of a team that runs a 3-4 at that outside linebacker position? Oh. And I ask because you are going to look at having to change defensive coordinators sooner or later. Sooner or later. always has a 4-3 philosophy, man. It's not, it's, it, be, I get that. I it'd be get like that. putting Swartz and Ryan together. You wouldn't do that. I get that, yeah. right? I understand. But at the same token, you have to at least look at what your options are, right? Yes. Yeah. So yes. is Tremaine Edmonds more dangerous in the middle of a 4-3 or on the outside in a 3-4? So let, let's just clarify to make sure everybody understands what we're oh saying, God. right? So you put Tremaine Edmonds in the middle of a 4-3 as your middle linebacker, right? When you talk about a 3-4, that means you have three defensive ta or three down linemen, right? Mm -hmm. So the Bills run four, this would be three. And typically that means that extra guy that's normally on the line is now at a linebacker position. You have four linebackers, mm -hmm. right? Now, typically, you, those transition to inside linebackers in, in a 3-4, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's no middle linebacker. It's th you have two inside linebackers. Typically, those... There's one linebacker in that 3-4 that is a, just a pass rush specialist. They're that's T.J. Watt. Is that, right? yeah. that's is, Watt. is that the guy? Is that is that what you're going to have Edmonds do? Or is I'm, he just, gonna be I'm the, just asking. Is he the weak side linebacker? Uh, I think he – well, Ed, I mean, Edmonds Edmonds one-on-one -on, -one on the outside is really dangerous. He is very dangerous. I, I don't think you're asking him to co pass cover on the weak side. Edmonds is – I think that's why he's in the middle because his pass coverage isn't great. So you think he's more Joey Porter? On the outside, he's a lot bigger than Joey. He is a lot bigger than Joey. He's a lot bigger than Joey. So you're telling me that my two choices are Edmonds as an outside linebacker in a three-four, yeah, or Edmonds as a middle linebacker in a four-three, right? Because they're not moving to the outside. It's just it's never going to happen. It's like Sophie's choice. I know, I know. Uh, I would say.
It's weird though. The, the rub is they play a lot of nickel. He's already on the outside anyway. You know what I mean? I mean, you put him in the middle, but he, like, drops this a bunch of different zones. He's covering a lot of area and stuff. Yeah, they use him in pass coverage a lot. In those well, I think, I think yeah. that outside in a 3-4, he wouldn't have to worry as much. Exactly. You would just get to be the athlete. You'd get to be the athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Correct. But you're talking about a guy that at 19 was asked to be the leader of, of mm-hmm. the entire group sure. of men a, on a defense that was, sure was. highly touted. Yep. And now you're going to ask him just to play an auxiliary role. I'd say if he... If he was turning 30, I'd say that, yeah. That's interesting. I think later in his career, he might be moved to that. You know what okay. I mean? That's interesting. Because hmm. who do you trust more rushing on the outside? Him or um, Jerry Hughes? <laughs> Talk about starting a fight. <laughs> sure. Whoops. Mm. Whoops. Let's, let's leave that root canal for another day. Okay. <laughs> I will say this. I agree with you. From a longevity perspective, the best way to leverage Edmonds in the end of his career is to use him in a pass rush role, right? Because he was actually very good at that at Virginia. Mm -hmm. He was a very good pass rush linebacker, right? And you take that away by moving him inside. Is that going to impact his contract? I think you have to look at Edmonds' deal is going to – you're tying him and Allen together, right? That's, That's your team. From here on and moving forward, and that'll never be at outside for now. I just don't see them drafting him. No, no, I as much I, as I want them to. Oh God, would I love for them to draft? I was just trolling a little bit. It was fun. Backer. What I'm saying is, what they did, what they decided to do was get the quarterbacks of both their offense. They're hoping if you, if you if you burn two first round picks, you better hope that at least one of them pans out. But if they both pan out, you look like a genius. If they keep playing and progressing the way they are, as far as Allen and Edmonds. First of all, I think they re-sign Edmonds. Mm-hmm. Second of all, if it pans out that the production keeps progressing, they're both going to walk into the hall together. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I, it's it's one of those circumstances again, though. It depends on how the rest of the franchise is handled, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, as of right now, the the, the word that you hate, the potential mm-hmm. of both of these kids, is amazing. Is yeah. like is off the charts, and, right. and you know people will complain about Edmonds about this, but he gets sticky inside too many times. You know, he, you know certain things happen. I understand that. The kid's still learning. Edmonds the still learning the position. Edmonds will have a career year in 2022 if they get him some some if they get him some actual help in that other linebacker position. I'm not saying Matt Milano does a poor job. Just they're so handcuffed by AJ Klein athletically <laughs> that they will be so much better if they get an actual linebacker to play next to him. Because I, I'm not saying I don't like AJ Klein, but he limits you. He limits you. I think that both. Allen, I wouldn't say that to his face. <laughs> I think that the success and progression of Josh Allen and Tremaine Edmonds is heavily predicated on the line that plays in front of them. Mm-hmm. Yep, you and I are on the same page. Say that we're on the same page. Totally agree.